Here is another video where I explore the idea of a horizontal asymptote, but I switch the equation so that the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is bigger than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator. So if you look at the degree of the numerator, it's 2 here, and the denominator is a polynomial that's linear, which means its highest exponent's a 1, so that's degree 1. So I have a case where the degree in the numerator is bigger than the degree in the denominator. Sometimes I abbreviate this t bigger than b for my students, as long as they remember that t represents the degree of the polynomial on top, the numerator, and b is the degree of the polynomial on the bottom. It turns out whenever this is the case, you do not get a horizontal asymptote. Sometimes you get an asymptote, but it's not horizontal ever. Uh, so the answer to this would just be there's no horizontal asymptote, but this video intends to explore why. So I'm going to do this numerically, and if you remember what a horizontal asymptote is, the actual question means what happens to the outputs of the function, in this case y, as x gets very large, not only in the positive direction, but also in the negative direction. So I'm going to start with x values small, like 2 and 20, just because that's what my graph here shows. But eventually, I really want to cut to the chase and say, you know, what happens when you plug things in like a million? <laughs> what happens to the function, or say a billion? Uh, so my point is this, that for small x values like 2 and 20, these lower degree terms like plus 1 and minus 1 do not play, or excuse me, for small numbers, they play a significant role, but for large x values, adding 1 and subtracting 1 don't really play an important role in uh, what the actual output is. So, for example, if I plugged in 2, it's a small number, you will see that adding 1 and subtracting 1 makes a big difference. So, for example, if I plug in 2, I get 2 squared is 4, and then you have plus 1 there. So my point is, if the plus 1 wasn't there, you'd get 4, but since it is, you get 5, so it makes a big difference. Uh, same thing in the denominator. If I plug 2 in, you get 2 minus 1 down there. So had the minus 1 not been there, you would have gotten 2, but since it is, you get 1. Big difference. In fact, this is 5 over 1, and all that says that if you plug in x equals 2, that the output is 5. So there's one point on my graph, 2 comma uh, 5 there. It's about right there. And if we go to 20, again, 20 is relatively small relative to, say, a million or a billion or a trillion. So the plus 1 and the minus 1 are going to play a somewhat significant role. But the bigger the x value gets, the less of a role it plays. So, for example, when you plug in 20 here, 20 squared is 400. And if you add 1, you get 401. So rather than getting 400 because of the plus 1, we get 401. So it makes a small difference. You get 401 instead of 400. And in the denominator, when you plug in 20, instead of getting 20, you get 19 because of the minus 1. But my point is that if you did this on the calculator, you'd see that you get roughly 20. So the idea is that that gives me the point 20, 20. It's actually a little bit bigger than 20. I'm not going to take the time, but if you want to pause the video and figure out what 401 over 19 is, it's a little bit bigger than 20, as you can see on the, uh, the graph there. But what happens when you plug in a million, you're going to see that adding 1 and subtracting 1 doesn't matter much. In fact, if you take a million and you square it, it gets astronomically large. So the idea of adding 1 is not going to change that numerator much. Same thing in the denominator. The, the minus 1 is going to change your denominator from 1 million uh, to one less than one million, meaning 999,999. So you can stop the video, do the calculation with the plus one and minus one, and then do it without, and you're going to see that it's not that big of a difference. Uh, so it turns out that this is approximately, the output's approximately the case, is if you didn't even have the plus one or minus one, in which case you'd have a million squared over a million, and the million, one of the millions on top would, would cancel with one of them on the bottom, and you'd be left with one million. So it turns out that for large x values, your output is roughly the same as your input. We input a million, we get out roughly a million. Now it's not exactly a million, because remember the plus one and minus one do play a very small role, but less significant the larger the x value becomes. So it turns out that for large x values, this equation x squared plus one over x minus one is approximately what you'd get if the plus 1 and minus 1 weren't there. Imagine if I just ignored the plus 1 and minus 1, you would have x squared over x. So it's approximately x squared over x, and this is only true for large x values. For x values that are large, 
this output here is approximately this, and as you know, this simplifies down to be just x, right? One of these x's divided by x is 1. So this simplifies down to be x over 1, with a small exception, but for our purposes, this will work. So what this says is for large x values, the input is the same as the output, that this equation is roughly y equals x, meaning what you plug in is what you get out. So if I was to go to a uh, better graph of this, let's go down the internet here, and here I plotted y equals x squared plus 1 over x minus 1, and here's some of the points that we saw before, 2 comma 5 roughly, and if you were to, let me get rid of the equation so that I can see better, if I was to zoom out, the x and y value are never going to be equal, but uh, the further I go to the right, the closer they're going to become. So here's an example where if you plug in 14, you get out 15. And this pattern continues, but eventually, like I said, for very, very large values of x, this graph does not look horizontal, therefore there's not a horizontal asymptote. But as you can see, there is an asymptote. It's just what's called a slant asymptote, and its equation is y equals x. So here's an example where if you plug in 235, you get out 236. Uh, so the idea is you're getting out roughly what you uh, plugged in. So let me go back to uh, this. You're getting roughly y equals x here. So it turns out, in fact, if I was to zoom back in maybe and graph y equals x as a second equation just by comparison, you'll see that the blue graph and the red graph are roughly the same meaning for small x values, they're not. If you zoom way in, you can see that for small x values, the outputs of our function and the outputs of y equals x are much different. Here you plug in 2, you get out 4, and down here you plug in 2, of course you get out 2. So, but for large x values, if you were to zoom out, the larger the x values get in the positive direction, and same thing with the negative uh, direction, it looks like your graph approaches y equals x. Um, so if you go back here, it turns out that there is no horizontal asymptote. Turns out there is a slant asymptote, and its equation is uh, y equals x. Um, but this question specifically said, what is the horizontal asymptote? So there is no horizontal asymptote. Sometimes if the degree on top is bigger than the degree on the bottom, you'll get an asymptote, but it'll never be horizontal. So for purposes of this question, I'm just going to say that it does not exist. And if you're working in math AS, you can just write D and E, meaning the horizontal asymptote does not exist. So if you've been watching uh, both videos so far, video one had the case where the degree of the polynomial in the numerator was smaller than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator. I called that top less than bottom. And the result is that you got a horizontal asymptote and its equation would be y equals zero. And in this video, I just found if it's the reverse, if the degree on top is bigger than the degree in the bottom, here it was 2 and 1, uh, that there would be no horizontal asymptote ever. It doesn't matter what the actual numbers are as long as this degree is bigger than that one. So, for example, had the equation been y equals x cubed plus x plus 1, just making things up, and this would have been x squared minus x plus 7 or something, would have been the same result. You would say the degree on top is 3, the degree in the denominator is 2, 3 is bigger than 2, so the degree of the polynomial on top is bigger than the degree of the polynomial on the bottom, and your uh, conclusion would be that there's no horizontal uh, asymptote.